$73 billion. That's the debt of Puerto Rico, a situation made much worse by the hurricane and its damage. Now President Trump's raised the prospect of simply wiping that debt out. We have to look at their whole debt structure. You know, they owe a lot of money to your friends on Wall Street, and we're going to have to wipe that out. That's going to have to be, uh, you know, you can say goodbye to that. I don't know if it's Goldman Sachs, but whoever it is, you can wave goodbye to that. We have to do something about because the debt was massive on the island. Of course, no president can just wave a magic wand and make Puerto Rico's debt disappear. Even his own budget director says not to take the president's suggestion at face value. I wouldn't take it word for word, and I think what you saw the president talking about was his acknowledgement that Puerto Rico is going to have to figure out a way to solve that debt problem in order to fix itself going forward. We can help it, and we will help it. We will help Puerto Rico rebuild from the storm. Puerto Rico is going to have to figure out how to fix the errors that it's made for the last generation on its own finances. Still, the White House could have a role. Since Puerto Rico filed for bankruptcy in May, the process has played out as a messy legal war. Bondholders have filed dozens of lawsuits. The island is essentially cut off from borrowing more money until it's all sorted out. So President Trump could use the bully pulpit to break this logjam. He could force the parties to negotiate a deal. Any deal that emerges isn't likely to come at Wall Street's expense. In reality, most of Puerto Rico's debt is owed to everyday American savers and investors through mutual funds. Less than a quarter is held by the big Wall Street hedge funds. So for once, it would appear that the big investment banks may not be the greedy villains in this story.